Coming up in the news, the education minister announcing that the reopening of school will be virtual. Find out whether or not private schools will follow suit. And the Christian Council weighing in on the importance of being vaccinated. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. The Education Minister announcing some major changes for the 2021-2022 school year during an address to the nation last evening. He says that due to the current health challenges in the country, some adjustments were necessary to ensure that all students, staff, and teachers remain safe. Italia Hall has our top story. Minister confirming that the way education is delivered has had to change. The Minister of Education, Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd, says the ministry understands the difficulty that students face while attempting to concentrate on his or her lessons during the COVID-19 pandemic. And with this in mind, the government has been doing its part to assist students during this time. We want to thank all of our donors for their most kind assistance to our deserving students in this time. For those families with no electricity or other basic necessities, we distributed thousands of learning packages for students to collect from schools, which were then completed and returned for review and correction by teachers. My beloved Bahamians, many of our students depend on the school system for a lunch meal. The Ministry of Education continued with that program. We even increased it as the need expanded. He says while schools are generally safe, the healthcare system is under severe strain as it relates to COVID-19. And the Ministry of Education considers that online instruction is best at this time. The aim is to get our students back in school face to face, but we will not put their health and their lives at risk, nor the lives of their teachers, administrators, parents and staff. We are not insensitive to parents and guardians and their childcare needs. And we ask you please to consider carefully the reason for our decision and to bear with us during this brief period in your child's lives. This decision, of course, will be reviewed constantly, weekly, we hope, with the hope that we will return to face-to-face -to -face as soon as the public health condition permits. As we did during the last academic year, the return to face-to-face -to -face instruction will depend on local conditions on each island. Some schools, small island communities, may return to face-to-face -to -face sooner. He says private schools are encouraged to follow the same format, adding that the ministry's mission remains to provide students with a quality education. And this is only possible if we maintain a standard of safety first and education always. Just a note, if the affection rates and challenges to our healthcare system continue without respite, Online learning will probably dominate the way we deliver instruction in this upcoming school year. Because today, our reality is a mixture of contact tracing and quarantining, mask wearing, and COVID-19 vaccines. We all probably have either been touched by this pandemic or know somebody who has been. And while we believe this will pass, we recognize that in the meantime, life must continue. The education minister also noting that this year's national examination results were commendable and applauded all students, teachers, staff, and parents. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. Now, in an effort to reduce the chances of experiencing a spike in COVID-19 cases throughout the country, the Ministry of Education has advised that all private institutions commence the new school term virtually as well. Our news team visited a local private institution today to hear their plans for the new school year. Rumiko Knowles has more. Principal of Tabernacle Baptist Christian Academy, Ashel Bean, says they have decided to follow the mandate of the government and notes that they will begin the 2021-2022 school term virtually. Basically for the safety of our students and for our staff members, more than half of our teachers have been fully vaccinated. Nevertheless, um, we know that a lot of the students may not have been vaccinated, saying that Pfizer has just been FDA approved. So hopefully um, by the time we open, a lot of our students would be vaccinated as well, but our teachers are 
it's not mandatory that they're vaccinated, but they chose to do it because we just returned today for the first time to speak with our teachers and a lot of them, more than half, have been vaccinated, so we are very happy about that. Bean says they are encouraging parents to have their kids vaccinated ahead of the school year, but it is not mandatory. She adds that as the institute prepares to open its doors virtually, some parents are not pleased with their decision. Some parents um, are for the virtual. I guess these are parents who don't work outside of the home, but then parents who work outside of the home, uh, this is a challenge for them as to who will be home with their kids um, as they go to work. A lot of parents have took their vacations out in the summertime so that they could be home with their kids during the summertime and hoping that school would have reopened, but now school is not opening, so now that puts them in a tight situation as to who's going to be home to ensure that the kids are doing what they're supposed to do virtually. As the principal, Bean says she prefers the face-to-face -face method as well and notes that not many parents can afford to purchase the necessary tools for their children to operate virtually. Trying to get those boxes are very expensive and so a lot of people just can't afford to do it. So that is going to put us in a, in a funny situation with those kids who just don't have it. A lot of them do not have internet connection, unfortunately, from Dorian. Yes, I know for a fact that those that live up east do not have internet connection. Now for those students who may not have a tablet or laptop, she notes that teachers of the school do their best to assist them. Thankfully for those students, our teachers still push, they still try. They would call and they would ask the parents well, to come and collect, you know, whatever work that they possibly can collect. Or, that, or we have a lot of after school classes and lunchtime classes. Our teachers are very dedicated in that area because they want to see the kids do well and they know that this is a matter beyond their control. So they do everything that they possibly can to make sure that they, are, they keep up or catch up. Tabernacle Baptist Christian Academy will reopen its doors on Monday, August 30th. Ramiko Knowles, ZNS Network News. Meanwhile, the area vice president of the Bahamas Union of Teachers, Quinton LaRota, applauding teachers and students for outstanding national exam results during such challenging times. Area vice president for the Bahamas Union of Teachers, Quinton LaRota, says he was ecstatic to learn of the outstanding national examination results of students here on Grand Bahama. LaRota extending congratulations to students and teachers who went the extra mile after losing classroom time post Hurricane Dorian. After a natural disaster like a hurricane, there's no need to try to figure out how much time you got to get back from, from our teachers. They, they could do it. They know exactly what needs to be done to get their students um, where they need to get them. They take a lot of pride in the success of their students. And so I feel ecstatic. I, I, I'm happy. I'm not happy for them. I mean, in um, 14 A's in an area, and uh, it's a, it, it is great. And so I think um, after the hurricane and doing face-to-face -face during the pandemic and having that um, level of success. I, I expect that the Minister of Education or the Director will give a little kudos to the Grand Bahama District um, for a job well done. A number of schools on the island earned an increase in average grades. LaRota says he believes that once the students and teachers transferred to a virtual environment, they took all of the necessary steps to go above and beyond. Sometimes when you lose um, something, you appreciate its value. And I think um, being away from school for, for, for that amount of time and the challenges of, of the p pandemic let everybody see, parents, students, you know, that, you know, this thing is valuable and we have to put our best foot forward. I, I believe that a lot of that is the extra effort and the push um, that the teachers and the students uh, apply during times of crisis and definitely after them. So I was, I, I was ecstatic and I want to congratulate those teachers, students, those parents, um, for a job well done. He also extended congratulations to parents who had to step up during the challenging times as well. He says these results were a result of team effort. And I want to congratulate my colleague here in BAMU and Mr. Butler and Dr. Bartlett, who I think um, along with our members um, and um, sharing the success. 
In other news, the Bahamas is now on the do not travel list. This according to a travel advisory dated August 23, 2021. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, issuing a level four travel health notice for the Bahamas due to COVID-19, indicating a very high level of COVID-19 in the country. The statement noting that the risk of contracting COVID-19 and developing severe symptoms may be lower if persons are fully vaccinated with an F FDA authorized vaccine, adding that before planning on any before planning any international travel, one should review the CDC's specific recommendations for vaccinated and unvaccinated travelers. Now, the advisory notes that persons should avoid travel to the Bahamas, but if they must travel to the Bahamas to make sure they are fully vaccinated before travel, noting that because of the current situation in the Bahamas, even fully vaccinated travelers may be at risk for getting and spreading COVID-19 variants, and a traveler should follow recommendations or requirements in the Bahamas, including wearing a mask and staying six feet apart from others. Now, the Ministry of Tourism releasing a statement on the travel advisory, noting that the Bahamas is among a large number of countries, including several Caribbean destinations, for which the CDC has issued a level four travel health notice specific to COVID-19 risk. The statement adds that the Bahamas is taking additional precautions to ensure that safety remains of the utmost importance with strategic entry protocols in place. These entry measures combined with on-island restrictions as necessary will help to protect all those who reside in and visit the islands of the Bahamas. Due to the fluidity of COVID-19, the government of the Bahamas monitors islands individually and can quickly enact protective measures to address specific cases or spikes accordingly. The Federal Drug Administration approving the first COVID-19 vaccine yesterday. The Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine will now be marketed for the prevention of COVID-19 disease in individuals 16 years of age and older. The vaccine also continues to be available under emergency youth authorization for young people 12 through 15 years of age and for the administration of a third dose in certain immunocompromised individuals. According to the FDA, the approval means that, quote, the public can be very confident that this vaccine meets the high standards for safety, effectiveness, and manufacturing quality the FDA requires of an approved product, end quote. The FDA says its review for approval included data from approximately 44,000 people and was found to be 91% effective in preventing the COVID-19 disease. Meanwhile, early voting for the upcoming general election has been set for Thursday, September 9, 2021. All eligible registered voters 65 years or older, overseas voters, and other voters in the specified categories may apply to vote in the advanced poll. Such persons are nominated candidates and their spouses, eligible overseas voters applying with Form J, a confirmed traveler already scheduled to be out of the country on election day, proof of travel must be provided, doctor certified individuals with illness, infirmity, pregnancy or recently pregnant and unable to vote on the day of general election, proof is required. Now 65 years and older, a copy of the voter's card is needed. Anyone younger than 65 will need proof of the reason why you need to vote early. A copy of your voter's card along with a government issued ID is also needed. Application form K can be obtained at the administrator's office 8 Mile Rock on or before September 3rd. Eligible overseas voters must complete and submit the application form J to their nearest Bahamas counselor or high commission office for onward submission to the parliamentary registration's head office in Nassau on or before August 27th. The form J is available at Bahamas counselor, high commission office, or the Parliamentary Registration Department Freeport or Administrator's Office in Eight Mile Rock. A state funeral is set for former, for former Deputy Prime Minister, the late author Dion Hanna, in the nation's capital on Thursday. Last evening, a memorial service was held on the grounds of the Progressive Liberal Party's headquarters here on Grand Bahama. Party supporters turning out to give thanks for the life of Hanna and to pay honor for the many contributions he made to the development of the Bahamas. 
The late Arthur D. Hanna being described as a champion of the people, one whose work centered on uplifting all Bahamians, and a founding father of the modern Bahamas who fought for equality and social justice. The Progressive Liberal Party celebrating the life of the former parliamentarian and deputy prime minister. Candidates for the upcoming general election paying tribute through reflections under the theme, A Walk Down History. Reverend Dr. Keith Russell delivering the sermon and sharing the biblical story of Joseph. Reverend Russell says that Bahamians can learn three important lessons about surviving harsh circumstances. The first is the power of a resilient community and clinging together. This is one of the messages he tried to champion. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. We Bahamians are somebody. We matter. We are a gift of God. Don't allow anyone to belittle you. Don't allow the king to disregard you and define who you are. Insist that he values you and respects you and learns your name. Reverend Russell's second lesson, cling to the power of your God-given worth. I believe that every day of his public life, Adam, Dion Hannah made that commitment and sacrifice. He decided, I'm going to see the king, whether the king is here or the king is somewhere else. I'm going to see the king on behalf of my people. And if I perish, he made it through being abducted from the motherland because God was with us and we stuck together. He made it through the brutality of slavery because God was with us and we stuck together. We made it through the ravages of colonialism because God was with us and we stuck together. And we will make it through these days because God is still with us, but we must stick together. Forget the me and the I. It's all about us and we. And finally, Reverend Russell says that Bahamian should cling to the power of a watchful, present God. A.D. Hannah's legacy encourages us to cling to the power of the living God. Do all that is in your power to do, then leave everything else to God. Prayers were then lifted for the family of the late A.D. Hannah. And so, Lord God, the bereaved family of the Honorable Arthur D. Hanna. Give them your faith and give them your courage. May they have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience. Not soaring as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness. The country's seventh governor general, the Honorable Arthur D. Hanna, will be laid to rest Thursday, August 26, in New Providence following a state funeral. Stay with us. There's more news right after this break.